welcome everyone. Um, uh, you're all here because um, our team and uh, all of us thought that you're pretty incredible human beings um, yourself. So uh, I'm very excited, humbled and lucky to be in, in a room with all of you. We've got some of the most amazing brands here uh, today. So please do chat to each other, find out what companies you run. Um, yeah, this is a pretty incredible room. So. Uh, we really wanted to host tonight just to get these uh, amazing group of people together in one room, uh, to get through that horrible January slump that seems to happen every year um, with unforgettable people in an unforgettable place with some pretty uh, amazing cocktails. So um, that was really the aim of tonight was just to, for you guys to meet each other, um, but also to dig into what does make, like Sam said, an unforgettable brand so you can take some tangible stuff back to your companies with you. Um, so most of you uh, are friends, clients, uh, supporters, investors of Inkpact. So you already know kind of who we are, what we do, and why we exist. But I'm going to give just a little short brief background for those of you that might not know too much about um, what Inkpact is. Um, also for any of those people that are just hotel guests and that have come in as well, you're more than welcome to stay. <laughs> um, we did have a guy earlier that's here for a gaming conference that was very excited to join. I don't know if he did, um, but we did say there was free alcohol, so I like his hustle. Uh, he's he's more, than, more than welcome to, to come and join us. So um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Charlotte Pierce. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Inkpact. Um, we're a software company with a bit of a difference. Um, we always like to say that we bring together the head of business, so the CRM, the data, the analytics, um, with the heart of business, so the thoughtfulness, um, the, the sentiment, uh, the kindness, and the connection with customers. Um, and we do that to increase brand sales, to increase their uh, customer loyalty, and to increase their engagement. Um, today, more than ever, I'm sure all of you guys know that customers hold so much power, uh, and they really buy from people uh, and brands that they love, trust. Um, and actually want to, to buy from. So it's more important than ever that we're creating these human connections. So at the moment, Inkpact does this uh, through a piece of very simple but clever technology and an amazing group called the Scribe Tribe. For those of you that don't know about the Scribe Tribe, there's over 200 of them across the country uh, from a range of different backgrounds who physically handwrite our messages on, uh, on behalf of our wonderful clients. Um, and they have just the most amazing penmanship and also just the most incredible people. Um, so we allow brands to send handwritten notes at scale at the touch of a button. Um, and in some recent case studies with retail brands, we've seen shopping carts increase by 30%. Uh, we've seen um, uh, second, third, fourth purchase rates go up by 58% just by that simple act of a handwritten note. So it really does uh, make all the difference. So, uh, one of my favourite people in the world, uh, Tony Robbins, for you, those of you that don't know him, he's one of the first ever, I guess, coaches, uh, motivational speaker, etc. said one of those, I think, amazing quotes, it's, if you do what you did at the beginning, at the end, there will be no end. Um, and I think that's so true for scaling businesses, uh, and they're really trying to get big and stay small. Um, but he was actually, Tony Robbins was talking about, because at the event where he mentioned this, he was talking about relationships, like intimate relationships. And he says, if you do it at the beginning, at the end, there'll be no end. And I was like, that's great, Tony, but actually, this is also true for businesses. So that's one thing that I think um, we, really, we really stick to, and hopefully something you can take away with you. Okay, so, uh, kind of getting to it, the wonderful tomorrow. So we all know that booking a holiday isn't usually what you'd call the most enjoyable, sexy experience. Um, we all love to go on holiday, but actually the act of booking it um, is not always so fun and exciting. And also when you, you book a hotel and you're kind of in that taxi and you're on the way to the hotel and you just have this flash of like holidays from hell. Oh my God, what hotel am I gonna be at? Like, what's it gonna be like? Um, so one company managed to create absolute raving fans out of what could otherwise be a very stressful, research-heavy uh, process. So Mr. and Mrs. Smith have created a booming brand with over a million members, probably a bit more than that now. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. just a few more. Oh, quite a lot more. <laughs> How many members do you have? Uh, I think it was 1.7 million. Wow, just a little bit more. Uh, 1.7 members in over 100 different countries and really provided them with an unforgettable holiday. So tonight it's my absolute honour and privilege to be joined by the wonderful uh, Tamara Lohan, who I genuinely think is one of the most wonderful humans on the planet. Right? Aww. Aww. <laughs> um, she's not only the founder of Mr. Rissa Smith, as I mentioned, um, she was one of the early clients of Inkpact, um, and then an investor, mentor, role model, and now friend um, of myself and Inkpact too. So um, we're excited to uncover what you think makes an unforgettable brand. So thanks so much for being here, Sam. My pleasure. 
so lucky that they did <laughs> thank goodness um, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here today but um, and it's very hard to put your finger on you know the magic that, that or what exactly happened and I think it's a combination of things so obviously Mr. and Mrs. Smith for those of you who are way too young to know um, is a throwback to the days post-war when people started dating again and going away for weekends away with loved ones, but it was still, uh, you know, frowned upon if you were in a hotel with someone outside of wedlock, even if you were planning on marrying that person. And so, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Smith would be the pseudonym that you would write in the hotel guest book if you didn't want people to know. And um, so I think, you know, the name captured the imagination. It was so different from all those terrible travel guide books out, out there. It wasn't luxury this or hotel that. It, you know, it captured the imagination of something that was kind of sexy and fun. And I, you know, we were the first people to acknowledge that people do not, couples don't go away to a hotel to play Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so there was a bit of that, there was a bit of, you know, these hotels were changing in the UK, but these tiny independent hotels had no voice. They had no way of reaching a customer base of adoring fans, and we gave them that voice, but they had already started to happen. The old, chintzy, fusty, horrible country house hotels were being left behind, and people were demanding more. Um, and so we, you know, we rode that wave. We also pushed it along. It was a, it was a great time, but also at the time, in, it was a couple of years before the internet really took off. And so the way that we had to build a brand was through a physical product, and that was a book. And so we managed to get a physical product into people's hands, and it was that tactile. And our book said, "We are different." because it was completely different. Everybody in the, the book industry at the time told us we were absolutely nuts. They said, but luxury is glossy paper. Why do you want to print on that nice, lovely, tactile, soft, you know, offset paper? And we were like, ah. and they said, well, you'll never make any money out of this business because you're gonna send a photographer around to every single hotel to make sure the book looks good. And we were like, yeah. And, well, they were probably right about that. <laughs> but you know, but what we were doing was different, and what we were doing was putting something into people's hands. We were making that human emotional connection, um, and so I think all of those things together, um, and obviously the hotels themselves being so wonderful, you know, came together as a whole to make us successful. So it kind of off Sorry, very long when no, <laughs> um, So off the back of that, like, what do you define as a brand? Like, it's a word that I've thrown around a couple of times here, and a lot of people talk about brand. But what is it? What do you think it is, and what is it for Smith? Um, so I think it's something that speaks to you as a human being. It's something that you connect with, something that you feel an emotional connection with. Um, a really great brand makes you feel like you're part of their tribe. So you want to be like them and like other customers of them. Um, and you know, it's something that you perhaps aspire to, that you see as, as part of your life. And a brand can do all of those things um, if, if it's kind of you know, that aspirational brand. There are brands, of course, that you, know, you just go to because you trust them, and trust is a really important part. Um, but I think to be that aspirational brand, you need to make more of it. You need to deliver on that emotional connection. Yeah, so I think one of the things with that link back to in particular is it's, it's more than just that, the logo, the copy you write, mm. it's, the, it's that emotion and the meaning behind a brand. And that's why I think Smith captured so, so well, is people want to be part of you. And the fact you can call them members, 
um, rather mm. than like customers and just that they want to be part of a, a tribe and part of a gang so I think it's super important yes no I mean every single person that comes onto the website is a member as soon as they book with us and you know they they can pay for membership and you know get uh, different levels of membership but even if you just make a very simple booking you're a member you know it's, we never refer to them as customers um, because we want them to feel they're like they're included. We were never, we never wanted to be a brand that was snooty uh, or too exclusive or put people off. You know, we were very inclusive. Anybody can be a Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You know, you everybody can go away and have those um, luxurious, sneaky weekends away, even if it's that's in a seventy-five pounds a night pub or. Uh, Five thousand pound a night suite in a in a glamorous hotel. You know anybody can be that, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Mm, amazing. So if you could pick like one practical thing that a brand could do uh, to kind of catapult them forward, what would it be? And that's quite a hard question. Wow. Yeah, that's really hard. <laughs> like one thing that they could focus on. I think it's it's making that human connection, and I think sometimes you can do that by making people laugh. By, but when you make people laugh, making them, you know, include them in the joke. Don't laugh at them, laugh with them. Um, and just speak to them. I think, you know, speak to your customers and, and uh, make sure that they get why you exist. You have to have a reason for being, I think, as a company. Yeah. And if you can get that across to people somehow in everything that you do, they, could, they will feel your passion, even though they're one step removed. Yeah, and I think, um, actually, Matt and your audience always talk about human to human, don't you, Matt? Rather than business to business, business to consumer, human, human to human. To human. Yeah, and actually, that. like, I'm remembering. Steal that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just remembering that actually, on the other side of that email or that screen or that letter or whatever it is, is a human. Mm. And I think it's so easy to forget that every day, isn't it? Um, and actually, having that as kind of part of your culture. Um, so, just a very good question about how your brand has evolved. So, you mentioned a little bit about how you started, obviously, with the books and then very much online. Has the brand evolved at different points of, um, of, of the lifestyle uh, that you've had as a person and the, you and James have had? Or has it evolved with the times? Like, how has it changed? Is it the same core brand or is it different now? Um, I think it is different. Um, our reason for being has changed because our members have needed us for different things as, as the industry evolves and as our members evolve as well. And obviously as digital, we talked about you know, digital and becoming you know, uh, always on and always there for the customer. Um, but you know, our, our reason for being has changed. So in the boutique hotel industry at the start, as I said, we were there to find these places because nobody knew about them. So we were the kind of the, really the curators. We were going to go out and find these places and give them a voice. And then suddenly you had this wave of, especially in the UK, Londoners who thought, "Oh, I'm going to start a boutique hotel." So they kind of take over Mum's old house in the country, slap Farrah and Ball on the on the walls, <laughs> put a bowl of you know apples in a glass bowl at the reception, and call themselves a boutique hotel. So there were all these places that were kind of. Uh, style over substance, let's put it nicely that way. And so then we, you know, our role was to sort the wheat from the chaff and to make sure that we were really only working with the really best uh, in class. And I think now, of course, you know, that our hotels have become a commodity and there are so many boutique hotels out there and so many places to book them, not least with the hotel themselves. But, you know, anybody, you know, 90% of all our hotels are on booking.com. <coughs> Um, so, in an, in an era where people can find your product anywhere, you have to stand out for a different reason. And so for us, we've become somewhere where we simply try and inspire people to stay at the most incredible places in the world with the people that they love. And with that, we become not just a booking site, but a travel club where we look after our members you know, all the way through. Um, and look after them like a member of a club rather than just a booker. Is there ever a time that you've seen the brand kind of go off track and you've had to like pull it back? So whether as you scaled or sometimes like, hang on, that's not really what we're true to and like, how did you get it back? Yeah, definitely. We did, you know, as Booking.com became more and more successful, you know, we felt, well, are we just a boutique Booking.com? You know, do we just curate and is that enough? 
But I think we realised after a year of trying to compete with them and you know, losing a lot of money on Google um, and realising that they have algorithms where you know, they, if you bid a penny above them, they'll just automatically bid a penny above that and you, you're just in a losing circle to the bottom. Um, um, that we realised we just needed to pull away from the, the, you know, I think every industry has this, that you all have these big 10 ton gorillas in the ring that you have to find. And I think we realized that we just had to distance ourselves from them and become different and stand for something different that they could never ever do. And that when you start to then focus on the customer, your members and what they really want from you, that's when they can't do that. And I guess a big part of that is down to the team at Smith. Um, so my kind of leads really nicely on to, to get such an amazing outward-facing brand, you have to have an amazing inward-facing brand too, and that's down to the culture and the people. Mm. Do you think that the outward-facing Smith really reflects the inward Smith, or is it different, or how do you get that, that culture running through the business? Yes, I think, um, you know, we're not always perfect, but um, the culture of, at Smith is really important. You know, we, everybody who works with us as passionate about these unique places to stay and about, I think in hospitality especially, you have to really want to make somebody else's holiday perfect and brilliant because this is people's precious time. You know, we, deal, we do a lot of honeymoons and a honeymoon is, is probably the, you know, the biggest outlay of cash that you will ever spend on a holiday. That's a huge responsibility for us. Yeah. And so you need the team inside who really want to make that holiday absolutely perfect. And so we have mantras internally for different teams. Um, and so for our uh, travel consultants who, who make bookings and advise people, it's leave nothing to chance. So think about everything, you know, ask the customer everything. Because if you miss the fact that they are vegan and this is they the hotel only has a restaurant that really is all about Argentinian beef, then you know, so leave nothing to chance is that mantra. And then we have a concierge service um, whose mantra is uh, go above and beyond and back again. And if you if you have a team that can embody those internal mission statements, um, then you've got a team who really care. Yeah, I think bits of a really good point and um, something that the Inkpad team are phenomenal at is just little bits of thoughtfulness, like mm -hmm. just hearing someone say they're a vegan and actually just checking. It's the tiny little bits that we do in our day-to-day -day life for our partners or for our family really easily, but we don't always do for our customers and our clients. Um, and we always do it um, at Inkpad if someone says it's their son's graduation or any, just anything, any, any data really that you can pick up on them uh, or any special moments and just checking back in with them and saying, you know, how was that? Again, just treating them like a human. So it's amazing that you get that filters all the way down. Yeah. So I heard that at a hotel, one of my favorite hotels in the whole wide world is a place called Fogo Island in um, Canada. And um, it is really at the extreme of Canada. And uh, on an island, it, it takes a hell of a lot of effort to get there. <laughs> and but once you're there, the architecture is stunning. It's taken um, uh, it, their lines from the old fishermen's huts all the furniture is recycled, uh, fishermen's boats and, uh, and wood uh, that has been upcycled and recycled. It's stunning, the location is just stunning. And I send lots of customers there because obviously I'm passionate about it and there's one thing that they come back and tell me, every single customer comes back and goes, that was amazing. And it is this. So when you're in a location like that, you often get passing, floating icebergs. And the hotel have created a tiny little hammer chisel and the customers take it outside and they knock a little bit of the iceberg off into a bucket they bring it back in and the barman mixes their cocktail <laughs> with genuine iceberg ice. <laughs> every single person comes back and they don't talk about the incredible architecture the incredible location the fabulous furniture you know they talk about that and it's that tiny detail that counts. And I see that again and again, not just in companies and business, but every single hotel, it's those details. And when you get those details, behind that hotel is someone who cares. Yeah, amazing. So what do you think that the biggest thing that a brand, um, what's the like, biggest difficulty a brand faces as it goes from that small you know, company where they can care a lot and they can do a lot more to as it scales? 
how, what's the biggest difficulty and kind of how do they overcome that? Yeah, so it is, it's bringing the, the it's all, all about the team. So it's bringing the team along with you, especially when you start to have offices in you know, global locations, how you get that message across and you make sure that you're always communicating with people um, and, and, and making sure that they're kind of, you know, saying those mantras and, and, and along the same vision as you are. Um, that's the most difficult thing. Cool. So, um, so Smith are a client of Ink Pant. Um, so why, why are you a client of Ink Pant? Cheeky little one in there for us. <laughs> why, why did you, yeah, that first time where um, I was actually meeting with your marketing team, I think it was, and then Tam was kind of sitting in the corner of the room. Um, why, yeah, why were you so intrigued by us to start with without meeting me or anyone first? And then, yeah, why are you still working with us? So I, I talk a lot, actually, um, at conferences and things. And my, my day job is a CTO, so I look after all the technical side. But what I'm really interested in is this magic that happens when the technical and the human meet. Um, and when Charlotte came in and presented that, I would, that just hit that button for me because it was the ability for us to show our customers that we cared enough to handwrite a note, to, to touch them personally in a human way, um, but we could do it you know, for, for a lot of customers. And being able to do that just you know, it just all came together for me. So that's why um, we're a customer because I think it's a great way to, to show customers that we care about them. Yeah, well, thanks for backing us very early on. Um, and um, yeah, we've just launched our Salesforce integration with Smith, which we're very excited about. Um, so I think one of the things that we're doing as a brand is going, well, we now know that you know all of our companies are saying to us, we want to have that human touch, but it also needs to be easy and the tech needs to be easy. So that's the big challenge that, that, we, that we can tackle this. No one else is tackling it. We can bring that together. So thank you for um, kind of uh, helping us on the journey too. I'm just going to quickly bring it out to the audience. Any more <coughs> questions are fine. Just for one or two questions, and then we can we can wrap it up if that's okay. Anyone have any questions for tomorrow? Don't be shy. Um, <laughs> if you could write to anyone in the world, who would, and I know that it would get open because you're just under fire. Oh, that's such a difficult one. Um, I think it would probably be my grandfather who died when I was 16 and at 16 you don't know all the questions that you want to ask um, and he was such an amazing human, he fought in the war, was, he was actually shot, um, the bullet went in through the shoulder and out the other side so he was not harmed and because the bullet went out had it stayed in uh, in those days he, you know, he may have got in an infection and died very much earlier um, but because it came out he survived. And, um, and I have so many questions for him, so that would be... And I know my son would probably have lots of questions for him, especially about a big shot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah super yeah, cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Death, destruction, blood, gore, yeah, yeah all that. <laughs> Ollie, you had a question at the back. Yes, tomorrow. I was wondering which company's brand inspires you, apart from Ink Pact, mm -hmm. and if you could get your hands on anyone or any company to rebrand, who would you like to have a crack at? Good question. Oh, gosh. So um, I'm working at the moment um, with Not On The High Street, mm -hmm. and um, I, love, uh, I love that business. Uh, for some of the same reasons that I love Charlotte's business, you know, it's got that very strong ethos behind, you know, they help small um, makers, people who are doing amazing hand-crafted things, and they provide the platform for those people to be found and, and to sell to people. So I really love that side of it. Um, so I'm really enjoying learning from them and, and helping them from my side as well. A brand I would like to rebrand. Gosh, that's a really tricky one. Hmm. Can I come back to you on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a question in uh, the back there. Anita. Yeah, hi. So today's quite a, 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 a awesome day. It's 100, 100 years when women got their vote. And it's so amazing to see two female founders uh, at an event. Um, what advice, both of you, this is end of you, uh, would you give to potential female founders who may be part of that kind of uh, Charlotte you were saying about I'm not sure, vulnerability, not, no confidence? Anything specific you would say to women who are just thinking, I could do that? 
My advice would be to look at the women who are doing it and tell yourself, because it's true, that they are facing the same fears as you. That there is no superwoman out there. Um, that especially, you know, if you're if you've got kids at home, you are like it's 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 you hope you look like a swan on top, but underneath you're paddling like Leo. Um, and that life is not perfect. And um, you know, some days you get it all right, and sometimes you get it all wrong. But most days there's some it's somewhere in between. Um, and so when you look up to these, you know, these other women, and you know, who are doing it, you're the same as them, and they are facing those fears every day, and you know, slaying those dragons, and dealing with challenges. And so if they can do it, you can do it. Yeah, I I completely uh, echo that, and it's it's amazing to have just people around you, no matter what stage of the journey they're on, that you can just talk honestly and openly to. There's so much BS that happens, especially in the tech entrepreneur scene. It's like, oh yeah, I'm running this amazing tech company. Look at our huge growth, and and they don't say I've had a really crap day today or this went wrong. Or, <laughs> but um, I actually find in the women groups that I'm part of, there is more sharing and openness, and I still think there is, is quite a long way uh, to go. But I think actually just telling the real human story of starting a business not just the glossy outside that everyone likes to see but I also think just the first step of starting is the hardest part um, and so actually launching that just the first what we're all embarrassed by the first version of the product or the first <laughs> rubbish line of code that you write or the first blog you put out there and you look back and you're like oh didn't I really want to say that but actually that is the hardest bit once you've got it out there you're like oh it wasn't that hard and you do the next bit and the next bit so I think actually one of my favorite quotes is when would now be the right time uh, and so actually rather than just keep talking about starting a business or talking one I'm this or that and just actually just start it even if it's a bit rubbish to start with um, so yeah so I'm just going to quickly end by stealing something from the wonderful Oprah that I saw her do. Um, uh, why not? Don't tell her if any of you know her. Um, so she does this thing at the end of her podcast where she's like quick fire questions. So you can only answer in one or two, uh, okay. one, one or two words, maybe a sentence at the most if you feel you have to. Okay. But they're supposed to be quick fire. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Your favourite book? Or a piece. <laughs> um, your favourite brand, you kind of answered it, you can have another one. Uh, I, at the moment, I love matches and what they're doing around content and bringing that brand together. Yeah, it's so, more than two words tomorrow, but sorry. we'll let you have it. Um, <laughs> uh, an industry that's up and coming? Oh, um, Handwritten letters. <laughs> <laughs> Handwritten letters? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Well, What's your favourite tech trend at the moment? Uh, blockchain. Yeah. yeah. What's your favourite country? Chile. Mm, why? I spent a year there and um, it, it has just the most diverse, incredible hotels. Uh, Santiago, very cosmopolitan, very safe South American country. Driest desert in the world in the north. Uh, lakes, forests, ice, volcanoes in the south, skiing, beach. How's it? <laughs> that's, a, that's an advert right there, isn't it? Um, what's the most daring thing you've ever done? Jump out of a plane? Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> cool. And okay, you can have more than a couple of words for this. This is the last one. So you can have a billboard and it's going to be shown in every single country all around the world with a message on it. It could be any message, but everyone in the world is going to see it. What would you say? What would you call it? Stay human, be kind. Mm. Amazing. And on that note, thank you so much.